We have left Langkawi Marina. So we pulled into Langkawi with a couple of minor, minor issues with the boat. I had to go to the mast yesterday. One of the screws had backed out and he did a job of thread lock, so that's all sorted out. Sea wind are sending uh, a batten box out. The mast is obviously a piece of aluminium tubing, and to the mast is screwed, it's tapped and screwed, the mast track. And the mast track is where the slight the, the batten cars go up, and it allows your mainsail to come and go and come and go. When we got in, I'm just going to do a course alteration. When we got in to um, our anchorage a couple of three nights ago, the main just wouldn't come down. It was jammed there. So we hand pulled it down. We tried using a reefing line we, and eventually it came down. And when it came down, we could see that the, the connector between the masts, the mast and, and, the, and, and the sail had snapped. It's a carbon fiber piece with a titanium ball joint in it. Get on to Mike at Seawinds who and James, the whole technical team. They're like, it's a really good support network. They're like, okay, what is this? And he's like, okay, unfortunately, you're gonna have to go to the mast and go and see what's going on because probably it's not so much that the batten box is broken, but something has actually fouled the the fouled the, the batten car and stopped it coming down. And by you hauling it down, you that you've destroyed the batten box. I don't mind going up the mast. I quite like it in fact. So up the mast yesterday. And yes, there was one screw that had backed out to the point of which it was proud of the, the mast track. So went up, added thread lock, put them all back in, thread locked all the screws. We also have a light that's come on on our Yanmar panel that says service transmission. I think it's on the starboard engine. It's at 275 hours. I think it's a 300 hour service. Anyway, onward, I'm sweating like an absolute beer. I, I, am, I am actually dripping in sweat and I'm not a sweaty person and I'm like, I can feel it like literally dripping down my arms. Uh, arms. Arms. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Goodbye, Langkawi. It was not nearly long enough. We saw basically the marina and the immigration office and the inside of a supermarket and that was it, which is a shame, a real shame. But we are on a mission as we've discussed at length. In recent episodes, we have to get the boat to Phuket because we need to put the boat on a ship so that we can ship our boat to the Med. Nick is making sausage sandwiches for brunch. Very exciting times. You got a wee hot toasted brioche with tomato, a wee bit of butter, uh, some ketchup and some mustard that I picked up from the store. What? It's a wee Glaswegian accent. 25 miles to go. Hell, I got 24 minutes to go. I think Nick's in a good mood because he's about to get a sausage sandwich. Oh, and I'm in a good mood because we're going back to Thailand and I have very much enjoyed our time in Malaysia, but I've got a soft spot for Thailand. And also, us being back in Thailand means that we've almost made it, which is uh, obviously a good feeling. Turn the pump on. What? Why have I got no water coming up? I'm going to get in here. Yeah. And hold this bowl here. Right. Are you going to get out? Yeah. Okay. Is there water coming out? There's water coming out. The dribble. That's the water machine. Yeah, okay. Finally, we've got like a pressurized hot water system that works. <laughs> I've got a soapy handle, I can't press the car on. A tremendously satisfying, hopefully, resolution to our fresh water problem. It's been driving me nuts for to the point at which it was keeping me awake last night. I was looking at the specifications on the internet for our fresh water pump and it's meant to pump up four gallons a minute which is 16 litres and I'm like there's no way it's coming out with that. I decided while we were on passage today to just sit down look at the entire run from the fresh water uptake down to the water pump and then if need be beyond. So firstly I took the pickup disconnected it at the first junction and blew through that and a load of crap came out. Then I took from the valve the, the isolation valve to the water pump, which is literally just a length of tube and a valve, blew through that, couldn't get anything to come out. So took the valve apart. The problem is it's a 15 mil tube. It's a 15 mil pipe. 
and the valve constricts it to about eight mil. And we had a, literally a nine mil piece of gel coat that was just jammed in there with a lot of other stuff. And this is what the symptoms were. The turn a tap on and we'd get really good water pressure for about five seconds and then it would just dwindle. Clearly what's happening is that as soon as you turn the pump on, what happens is this little piece of gel coat goes flying into the valve, jams, slows the water down and then creates a back pressure. When you turn the pump off, it goes back out again. So it was just about clearing that valve. The first time is a difficult one in tracing the fault. If it happens again, we'll know exactly or I will know exactly where to look. But satisfactory resolution because the water pressure is up to speed everywhere and the stern shower is working fine and the washing machine should now be working fine and the tank is filtering stuff perfectly and so yeah finally we have uh, hopefully the end of our fresh water issues I just wanted to interrupt this episode very, very quickly from an absolutely stunning anchorage in Thailand. I'm just going to move so you can see the gorgeous sunset behind me to remind you that we are on Patreon and our patrons get so many good benefits and perks. We invite them out to come sailing with us. We have meetups, really amazing, fun meetups. Our patrons also get early access to all of our videos. We do live streams. We have a WhatsApp group, which is very active. Like literally every day, there's people chatting about boating and sailing and what they're up to. And we also keep everyone up to date on the WhatsApp group about our movements throughout the day and our various trials and tribulations. So if that all sounds good to you, then there's always a link in the description below for Patreon. Give it a click, check it all out, have a read, and uh, hopefully we'll see you over there. Okay, let's get back to the episode. Mm -hmm. So, Thailand again. I keep wanting to be back in Thailand. I like, I love Malaysia. I, I like Thailand. There's, a, there's an anchor field there, so. Yeah. No mistaking where we're meant to go then. Me, my, me Bunnings hat. Got to lose it. Might actually um, find some other cruises, Nick. Haven't found many other cruises <laughs> this whole time we've been here. All right, we're just circling, trying to find somewhere to anchor. It's a couple of boats on mooring boys, like this one behind us. So I'm just trying to find somewhere that has like decent depth and uh, no bombies on the bottom. I didn't film any of that. Sometimes it's just, there's just too much going on and you're like, I just can't add another element, i.e. running around with a camera, into this situation because it's already like at the brink of what I can handle mentally. We must have done about four laps around this anchorage. It is a tough anchorage and we were lulled into a full sense of security because there's so many boats at anchor here. We're like, oh, this is where everyone is. It'll be fine. We just went around and around and around in circles. We tried to anchor. Nick dove on the anchor and he just like jumped in the water and was like straight away, there are just coral bombies everywhere here. So we got nervous and we just raised the anchor straight away because we're like, what if we swing in the night, which we're supposed to do and our chain gets wrapped around a bommy. I mean, you don't want to damage the coral, but also we don't want to like get stuck with our chain wrapped around a bommy. Um, and also we're quite close to another boat. So anyway, we were getting a bit stressed, weren't we, Nicholas? We're, the problem is that we are so, we have so little faith in our anchor that we're really jumpy about anchoring and we need like perfect conditions. We need the perfect, oh, babe, watch out. We need the perfect, um, holding and this is like deep shelving like quickly shelving coral bombies everywhere yeah we're just like very jumpy about our anchor dragging after that one time but since we've arrived no less than three boats have uh come and anchored in this anchorage so just come and anchor down and away, like, i know look at this one. they just make it look so easy i don't know why we get so stressed about it maybe we should just like chill out a little bit that's the secret to good anchoring just to be more chill so look these guys are just these guys are just alive meanwhile we were circling for like a solid i want to say at least 45 minutes oh well at least we give the anchorage a bit of entertainment it is it is actually so beautiful here isn't it it is yeah we'll just sit here and decompress for a while I don't know about you, but I could do with a little sundowner. It is a beautiful, beautiful evening here in Kolaipi. I don't even think that we've talked about where we are. We're in Kolaipi. Anyway, yeah, so we're gonna go and have a little celebratory drink. First night back in Thailand. Very exciting times. 
Oh, and that's good grief. They look really nice. Pretty deep, I think, Max. Just don't, just, just go slowly, yeah? All right, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. All right, let's find some beer. Where do we go? Cheers. Oh, how lucky are we that this is our view every evening, although tonight is particularly spectacular. Good morning everyone. We are just leaving Ko Lipe behind me and unfortunately we can only stay the one night and I'm regretful of that because it was absolutely beautiful, especially going through the islands of the National Park this morning. It just looked stunning. Very, very still, windless, calm morning. We had a very hot night. There was not a breath of wind and it was one of those like really hot, sticky nights. So neither of us slept particularly well. We do have air conditioning, as you may know. We don't really like running the air conditioning um, unless it's an emergency, <laughs> unless we really, really have to, because we're still working out um, to what extent it depletes the batteries and a very very still calm morning and now we are on our way to somewhere called Co Rock. R O K? Co Rock? No point getting the sails up, there's literally no wind at all. So we're just motoring along. Now we have 30 miles to run today until our waypoint, which is great. Um, a tiny little archipelago in a national park, so we have no Wi-Fi signal, but you know what? It's pleasant. I tend to, when I'm on passage, just potter around cleaning. The only negative, and it's only a minor, gro a minor quibble, is it's just so bleeding hot in here. It's absolutely stunningly hot. According to it's 33, 34 degrees, 100% humidity. We were here, and we're going to this little waypoint there. 33 nautical miles. I've only found picked this wheel. I've worked out why it's, it's the bit that got dropped overboard. It's this little thing. I can't fish without it, so. This bit goes there. Yeah, so I need to fashion something with what I have on board. Only nine and a half miles to go. We've got four sailing boats coming up behind us. And uh, I'm sure we'll get there first, which I'm pleased about because there's a mooring field and I don't know how many mooring boys there are, but uh, I think that this is a fairly popular day trip destination from the surrounding islands. So obviously we want to Pick up a boy. I could really do with a nice cold swim. That is what I feel like doing. So fingers crossed that's in my near future. Radio, check. Bunnings hat, check. Binoculars, check. I'm ready to go. We are just approaching the uh, mooring field. Let's have a look. This is awkward. Too much going on here. One sailing boat at anchor and three or four like day tripper boats. So hopefully there's a mooring left for us and the several boats behind us who are also coming into this anchorage. warm yeah it's be 32 33 degrees but it's crystal clear oh <laughs> oh that was definitely not my most graceful moment bit of a current oh yeah, i'm already kidding okay it turns out the currents are quite strong What a day. What a week, what a month. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, what an amazing location. And have you noticed, Nick, that 
There are no monoholes in this bay or in this anchorage at all. There's about 10 boats and they're all catamarans, which I don't think I've ever seen before. It is beautiful. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am. I'm enjoying them immensely. <laughs> But as I've been saying, you know, enjoy these episodes of us sailing around Asia while you can because soon we are going to be in the Med and that's why we're in such a mad rush because we've got a ship to catch. Alright guys, if you're enjoying these episodes then please subscribe to our channel. It actually really makes a big difference and we really appreciate it and give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next week with more sailing and exploring around thailand take care bye <laughs>